This week we are in Prague to track the journey of Czech fugitive Rodovan Krejčar from one of the most beautiful cities in the world to Bedford View in Johannesburg. This is Checkpoint and I'm in Gepide Mabuse. In 2005, Rodovan Krejčar escaped the clutches of the law here in the Czech Republic, where he was being investigated for tax evasion, fraud and murder. He escaped to the Seychelles, but was only accommodated there for about two years. Since 2007, he's been living in South Africa. His stay there has been characterized by allegations of drug trafficking, money laundering and murder for people here. Watching what's unfolding in South Africa is history repeating itself. I arrive in Prague to festivities commemorating the Velvet Revolution. Exactly 25 years ago, students, artists and singers led peaceful demonstrations that brought down the communist state of then Czechoslovakia, giving birth to a democratic Czech Republic. Much like our post-democracy period in South Africa, there was a scramble among the elite for the Czech Republic's resources and wealth. As the state embarked on mass privatization of its assets, it is in this context that Rodovan Krejčar's star began to rise. It's believed he wanted ownership of state petroleum company Chipro. Investigative journalist and author Yaroslav Kementa has probed some of the most notorious Czech gangsters and has written three books on Krejčar. I met Kamenta outside an office building from which Rodovan Krejčar once operated. He believes Krejčar's obsession with owning Chipro shaped him into the man we know today. Krejčar wanted to take over this multi-billion dollar company and he did everything to get it. A kingpin in South Africa, in the Czech Republic, Krejčer is considered a failed businessman who resorted to crime to make his money. Originally from Czeski Tishin on the Polish border, Krejčer gained notoriety after he moved to Prague. In the 90s, he decided to move to Prague because it is the capital of business and the capital of the Czech Republic, of course. After his money lending business failed, Kementa tells me Krejčar cast his eyes towards the lucrative oil sector. He became an expert in oil. He bought oil in foreign countries like Russia and imported it to the Czech Republic. And then, in a dramatic turn of events, his father, Lampert Krejčar, was abducted for ransom. Tales abound about the impact this had on Krejčar's personality. There is a story that he got the name of the person who kidnapped his father, took him to a special place, put a gun to his head and money in front of him and said, you have two choices, you can either tell me what happened to my father or die. If you tell me, you can leave with this money. Krejčar reportedly let the man go. Krejčar Sr.'s body was never found, but the 2002 kidnapping is widely thought to have altered his son's path and personality. Since that time, his personality changed. Krejčar started to become a mafia, a gangster. As Krejčar's notoriety grew, so did his status in the underworld. 
The former deputy head of organized crime in the Czech Republic, Hinek Vlas, tells me Krejcha led one of the most powerful organized crime syndicates in Czech history. He was investigated for fraud, tax evasion, murder and extortion. Vlas shows me prominent individuals once linked to Krejcha's network. Big state companies, for example, as well. Part of the syndicate? Mm -hmm. Yes. And ministers, politicians? Yes. Yes, you can see several of them from different departments. Around 10 former and current ministers. Two ministers of internal affairs and two former prime ministers. And like in South Africa, many of his associates ended up dead. His father Lambert is dead. This one survived an attack. He tells me that in the Czech Republic, Krejcha has been linked to the disappearance and probable deaths of five people. But allegedly, he was too crafty, corrupt and connected to be brought to book. Coming up after the break. The dramatic escape that catapulted Krejcha to superhero status. Rodovan Krejcha's dramatic escape from this villa in June 2005 transformed his image in the Czech Republic from that of ordinary gangster to celebrity. Some even refer to him as Superman. <coughs> Rodovan Krejcha built himself a palace in the late 90s, a 20-minute drive from Prague. It is said to have been registered in his wife Katerina's name. They reportedly lived here for about 10 years. They bought it for 20 million Czech crowns. Krejčer invested in this villa, rebuilt it, and the state agents say it is now worth 400 million Czech crowns. That's over 200 million rand. This is one of the most luxurious villas in the Czech Republic. It had a huge aquarium with a shark tank inside. But what made this property world famous was Krejcher's escape during a raid by a squad of supposedly crack Czech policemen. <laughs> On June 18, 2005, he slept in this villa for the very last time. That day, the police's special unit came here. They searched his house. After this raid, he should have been arrested and taken to the prison. The raid is said to have lasted seven hours and yielded evidence of fraud. Some say the police were exhausted and that his escape was a blunder. Others believe he bought his freedom through bribery. Krejcher says he escaped torture and trumped up charges. The escape was a huge scandal and political scene as well. The head of police resigned and many police officials were punished. The former deputy head of organized crime, Hinek Vlas, supports the bribery theory. He was a lucky man. He always manages to find weaknesses in the system, and he knows who to bribe to achieve his objectives. Details of the escape were media fodder. Krejcha, it was said, made his way out of the country on foot by bicycle, train, boat and cars, then finally caught a plane to his next destination, the Indian Ocean island of Seychelles. In a book published after his escape, Krejcha boasted about his achievements. 
Investigators say he continued the trend of bribery in the Seychelles, where he lived until 2007. But then an extradition treaty was signed with the Czech Republic and he was forced to flee again, this time to South Africa. He arrived at OR Tambo on a false passport and was arrested. He convinced a magistrate that there was a conspiracy against him in the Czech Republic and he walked free, very impressed with the South African justice system. Well, I always believe for the justice in this uh, the justice system in South Africa. He has consistently blamed Czech authorities for orchestrating criminal charges against him and accused the ruling Social Democratic Party of reneging on a deal to hand over control of state-owned petroleum company Chipro. But former Czech policeman Vlas says politics has nothing to do with Kreutzer's brushes with the law. It's absolute nonsense. He's just a criminal who escaped from the Czech Republic. But a very clever criminal, not unlike two other characters Vlas investigated during his time in the police. They are likable characters. They have a very good social intelligence and they are always in touch with people because they need people. Next, we meet Miloslav Potiska, who says he was once Kreutzer's right-hand man. Now he wants to turn state witness. I have proofs, I have uh, papers, I have uh, messages, I have everything. 